Hello, I'm the Resolute Cartographer, and this is the sixth video in my Fallout 76 Surveil series, specifically in this case, covering the White Spring Bunker. Taking a look at the map here, this is where we are, right next to the White Spring Resort, mimicking the real-world Greenbrier Resort, and the actual real-world bunker underneath it. So we're going to go in and check this place out now, we're going to read all the terminals and everything like that. All right, now I'm going to note that there are going to be plenty of spoilers in here, so if you don't want to see them, you should turn the video off now. Uh, keep in mind that this content is late in the game. In fact, just going through that door requires that you get through the Responders, Raiders, Free States, and Brotherhood of Steel quests. I mean, just to open that one door. Uh, so here's the main entrance to the bunker. I mean, beyond the actual exterior facade. And as you can see, it is a vault tech door. It even says vault tech Societal Preservation Program on it. Now this character has beaten the game, but even so, even before that, when you first arrive here, all these robots are friendly. This is easily one of the best preserved pieces of the pre-war world within Appalachia. The uh, colors here are more vibrant than you find almost anywhere else in the world, especially when you just compare, consider the colors on that American flag there. So this is the actual entrance area. We can just take a look around here before we head on. So we got some file cabinets, this front desk here, the terminal's broken unfortunately, so we can't look into that. But we will uh, take a look back over here in this sitting area. There's some bookshelves here, you can open these up, but there's nothing in them other than books you can't touch. And then we're going to head on over here and take a look down here. And so there's just some random pieces of junk, some little containers and a uh, destroyed Assaultron, including a damaged Assaultron head, which we can investigate. And using Intelligence of 7 Plus, we can attempt to reactivate the Assaultron. Initiating final playback. Engage. That's the last of them. Entrance is clear, General. Lotus, have the rest of these things stand down. The General's placing Eckhart under arrest. It's over. General Santiago is dead, Major. What? What the hell was that? There's been a detonation in the weapons lab. It appears the agent has eerie little thing there and it's a, uh, a marker of things to come so uh, if you didn't know that modus is the AI that controls this bunker and all of these robots that are walking around the protector on but butlers and the assaultrons and everything like that so right over here to the left are the elevators we're not going to take these yet but I'm just going to show you this area again another sitting area and these two elevators now where those elevators go is entirely dependent on where you are in the main quest so, we're going to head this way. There's a small robotics room here with a bunch of these bot pods, which are the machines that actually reassemble and rebuild these robots and send them out to do their patrols and to do their service and everything like that. This is intake. This is where everyone who is coming into the bunker uh, from the government and the military would first come in and uh, change out of their clothing and into clothing that was free of radioactive dust. And then they would come through these decontamination showers here. Next, they arrive here in this area where they get a uniform. In this case, it looks like they were getting vault suits, actually. But once they got their suits, they would come over here and they would stand here and get their portrait taken and get an ID for the bunker. But we're going to take a look over here in the security area. 
Again, terminals are broken out. We got an old radio here. Some random little bits of junk, some more bot pods. And again, just more small bits of junk. And there are some Mr. Gutsies in here as well. Okay. So then they would come in this way and start heading towards orientation. Head down these stairs. And here we get the real big view of Modus. Again, the AI that controls this entire bunker. It's a Zax computer, I believe. Uh, similar to the one that houses the personality of President John Henry Eden within the Capital Wasteland. So, let's take a uh, gander here. The damage done to this facility by its earlier residents was extensive. We are still trying to put things back together. You vault dwellers are a capable bunch. We will give you that. Please, make yourself at home. Alright, so yeah, we've got more sitting area in here. Let's see if he has anything else to say. This place has all you could ever want. At fair market value. You're finding your stay comfortable, we hope. We've taken great pains to return this place to what it once was. General? Yes, you become the rank of general over the course of the main quest. So, yeah, there are turrets all over the place as well. All right. So, if you haven't figured it out from that first Assaultron head and from Moda's talking just now, there was fighting that took place within the bunker with the uh, original Enclave inhabitants fighting each other. Why they were fighting and everything like that, we're going to find out here before too long. So, let's continue on through the bunker. Okay, now we have a view of the production shop down there. If we look out the windows to the left. Again, another just hallway here. And we come into this room here with a nice pool table. And there are refreshments that can be obtained from these machines here. At least you can when you first arrive in the bunker. And then over here we have another small robotics area. And this stairwell here which is blocked off. Showing you the severe level of damage that still exists within certain parts of the bunker. The fact that it's still it's in as good a condition as it is elsewhere is actually pretty incredible and a sign of how productive Modus has been, uh, especially given his reduced capacity, which we'll be seeing here before too long. So yeah, this is another sitting area. Off to the right we have the uh, communications center. Alright, and here we are in admissions. Now when you first arrive here, you take a questionnaire, which uh, they use to determine whether or not you'd be a good fit for the Enclave. There are dispensers and collector terminals and modus terminals around here. Let's see if he has anything else to say. You vault dwellers are a capable bunch. We will give you that. There are multiple different types of modus terminals. It seems that we've reached the limit of what this specific type has to say. Now there are also information terminals here. White Spring Net. Have questions? Select your query from the list below. What is this place? This is the White Spring Congressional Bunker, built to house the members of Congress, the President, and their Cabinet in the case of a hostile nuclear strike. This facility is a fully automated, machine-managed refuge from nuclear war designed to provide the perfect blend of security and comfort. When can I leave? The White Spring is a way of eternal since... Uh, error. Who is in charge? The continuation of normal life is critical to a successful stay inside the bunker, and as such, your supervisors outside the bunker will remain your supervisors inside the bunker. If your supervisor was unable to reach the bunker in time, our system will automatically look up your next in line supervisor. According to our records, your supervisor is error, guest information not available. Be sure to check in with him at your earliest convenience. I need something. Who do I speak to? Why Monus, of course. MODIS, the multi-operation, directions, and utility system, is a one-of-a-kind computerized support unit, custom-built for this facility and designed to meet your needs on command. Once you've been cleared for access, just visit any of MODIS's various support stations and the system will whip up a batch of whatever it is you may require. At fair market value, of course. What do I do now? Congratulations, you're cleared for entry. 
Suggested areas of interest include a military wing, science wing, production center. Now that's because we've completed a bunch of quests here. Now, we have a surveillance recording here, and there are multiple surveillance recordings throughout the base. Unfortunately, there don't seem to be any dates on them, unless this 1.1.7 is a date. But I have not been able to figure out what that system might be. So let's hit this. White Spring. Automated recording. 1.1.7. Gentlemen, the news is not good. It is my sad duty to inform you the Secretary of the Treasury has passed. Acute radiation sickness, it seems. This, in addition to the unexpected severance of our connection to Raven Rock and the President, means our little enclave is without leadership. According to the rules of succession, outlined long before our entry into this bastion, that responsibility now falls to me. I acknowledge the pain you all must be feeling. I see it on your faces, and I feel it in my heart. Loved ones lost, colleagues gone. But now, now is not the time to allow ourselves to be overwhelmed by tragedy. This is the moment to recognize and seize the opportunity that lies before us. The world outside believes the war is over, and there are no more true Americans with the will to fight. They are wrong. We are going to fight. We will use this facility to continue the battle against our enemies, against communism, against all the wretched things that brought this war upon us. And we will, for once and for all, put an end to war. When we are victorious, there will be no more enemies left to stand against us. But, of course, the rule of law still applies here, my brothers and sisters. The Enclave is the bastion of democracy and will remain so, I assure you. So then, let us vote. All in favor of using this facility and the resources of this land to continue the war that others believe lost, please move to the left side of the room. All who oppose, please move to the right. Well, there you have it. I'm sorry to see so many uncommitted cause of America. Mr. Gray here will help sort out accommodations for you all. Everyone else, please follow me down to the science wing. Accommodations? What the hell is he talking about, Gray? Not to worry, General. We have a plan for you all. Modus, seal the room. The room is sealed. Alright, now that, disturbingly, is actually the second culling which took place within the bunker, and it was not the last. Now, Thomas Eckhart there, it was the Secretary of Agriculture before the war. As you heard, he was the ranking member of the bunker to reach here after the Secretary of the Treasury died of acute radiation poisoning. So he ended up leading this bunker. Now, as he also said, this facility lost connection with both Raven Rock and the President, the President being at the Poseidon oil rig out in the Pacific. So, let's continue on with this. Now, Agent Gray there, what is, well, he was, 
one of the most prominent of the Enclave's agents within Appalachia, and he is behind a lot of the activity that you see within Appalachia, which has Enclave fingerprints on it. This area is locked when you first show up here, well, when you first get into this room, I mean. Uh, but you, when you earn Modus' trust, he allows you through here, and uh, just a quick note over here, these are all information terminals. But this is where the elevator first lets out, right in this area, so that you can get in between this and that room right up above us, the entrance room. Now we can head through this, head down these stairs, and here we are in yet another area with a cafe here on the right. We got, uh, this is where the elevator now, where it comes for me. And whenever it is you've completed more missions for Modus, he lets you down here. After you activate the Kovac Muldoon orbital platform, he allows you down here. So, yeah, you've got a big enclave symbol here on the wall. And uh, there is a kitchen back over in here for this cafe. Yeah, things have clearly not been well cleaned up back in here. And there's ant meat and stuff like that. But we have a terminal over here. Cafe terminal. White Spring Net, welcome to the cafe, main menu. Due to factors outside of our control, the menu has been streamlined. Please make a selection from the following options. Salisbury steak, MRE beef stew, data lost, MRE barbecue chicken, surveillance recording 5.3.1. We're going to just see what these do. Salisbury steak, transmitting order, error code 000923, network malfunction, contact local admin. Let's see if it says the same thing for all these. 924. Data lost is just entry unavailable. MRE barbecue chicken. 926. And surveillance recording entry 5.3.1. White Spring automated recording 5.3.1. So you made it all the way from the capital. How'd it look? You ever been deployed, Mr. Gray? Not exactly. Did a couple visits overseas, Asia mostly. You like talking about him? No. That's what it was like. Better left unsaid. Couldn't have been that bad. They say you only lost five men? Pretty incredible. Considering how bad it is in the capital, so you say. What exactly are you implying? Remind me again why a group of soldiers from D.C. decided to come all the way out to Appalachia? Didn't you have orders? We came out here because one of my men heard a rumor this place existed. Because our families were scattered to the winds or dead. Because the White House was hit with a thermonuclear weapon, and the only place we thought the government could have possibly survived the horrors we saw was right here. And we were right. We've seen hell, Mr. Gray. We're here to make sure the Reds get it worse. Alright, so yes, you heard there, Ellen Santiago originally came from the capital wasteland and managed to get her soldiers here. Now, I assume she probably came up this highway here and right up to here. Uh, but anyway, she arrived here a colonel and was eventually made a general, a post that she did not want, as you'll also see before too long. Now let's just take a quick look around here. And this takes us over into production, which we're not going to go into just yet. There's also a, uh, a service exit within the production area and everything like that. There's this area down here, this big hallway. Again, this whole area is blocked off, but you can get in on the other side. You got one bot pod there. You got another area here that's blocked off. This goes into the medical bay. We'll get to that in a moment. Again, goes to production there to communications there, and to the science wing there. So let's head back up into that main area and check out the other side. So there seems to be actually a little reflecting pond in there, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, you got a uh, couple of milk machines, coffee machines, well, espresso machines, I should say. So this is the actual main comm room here. We'll check that out in a minute. Then we got this other staircase down here, and this takes us to the other side of that blocked hallway. And yet another bot pod. Whatever it is that's back there, we don't know. And it will be very interesting to see if at some point Bethesda digs those places out for future content. We also have the military wing here. 
We have the resort exit, which takes you out into the White Spring. We have this blocked off door here and another entrance to the communications room. Let's just take a quick look at this resort exit. We got a small security room. We'll check this room out as well. Just a couple of bot pods, a couple of computers hooked up to the wall there. And we have a uh, decontamination shower here. There we go, took care of that little bit of radiation I, radiation I had. And here we are in the White Spring Resort. Hit the button on the wall. And here we are up in the White Spring. There's a little hand scanner here on the wall. We'll wait for it to close real quick so we can see what it looks like when it's closed. Today's security status is red. Please take appropriate precautions. All right, now again, hand scanner. And there it is, back through the blast door, laser grid, and we're back in the White Spring. Okay, so let's take a, well, let's actually go in through the upper level and we'll head into communications up there. Okay, so here we are in communications. Now, this would have been their hub that the Enclave would have used to make contact with all the rest of the parts of the Enclave at the Poseidon platform and at the Raven Rock bunker, along with any other military bunkers that we just don't know about yet. We've got some computers here on the wall, voter services terminal, and uh, we'll take a look at those in just a minute. We've got a MODIS terminal here. Let's see if it has anything to say. Unfortunately, this space was made largely vestigial to our needs due to earlier damage. It is only thanks to your efforts we have any decent connection at all. Like I mentioned before, uh, part of this includes making contact with Kovac Muldoon, the orbital platform uh, that the Enclave was planning on using. And uh, so let's take a look here. We got uh, multiple things on the screen here. We got a map of the world, including, I'm assuming, paths of satellites going over it. We got detection suppression system active. Automation status, live. Primary connection site, CB002, White Spring. External facility connections, connection lost. We got a satellite view. We got the main map of the area that we see all over the place. A bullet damaged screen here. And then we have a general map of the facility, which includes the fact that the science wing has a biohazard logo and the operations mainframe has a power issue. Now, if we take a look at the map, you can see that the science wing is that area there and uh, we'll find out specifically what part of the science wing that is here before too long so let's just take a look around these rows of terminals see if there's anything else to see we'll talk to modus some more this space was to be the beating heart of the enclave's master plan today it's storage so much for the plans of great man uh, something, el something else to mention, it is currently the defense condition is at 1, meaning that we are in the state of nuclear war, which is why it's possible to launch the nukes currently. Uh, so we're going to take a look at why that's the case here before too long and what this really means. Uh, but we've also got the current Enclave dailies here. Uh, extermination operation, robot patrol, and resource drop. And uh, those things are all dailies you can find in the world. Let's see if there's any going on at the moment. Yes. Enclave event, drop connection, Watoga. And I believe that's a resource drop mission, but uh, we're not going to go into those right now. So let's see if there's anything else to see here. Let's talk to Modus again. Looking for something. To one side of this room, we have the military wing and resort exit. To the other, the med bay, production center, and science wing. Okay. Another modus terminal. We were once connected to Enclave hubs across the United States from here. Raven Rock, the presidential rig. It is likely we will never see those places again. We believe the men and women of this bunker had noble goals. The end of war. The final defeat of evil. But they were too petty to see them realized. 
and left us with their mess. The board above displays any currently available operations we could use help with. Head topside if you wish to participate. Passing through, General. I believe that's probably about it. We'll check one more time just to be sure. Looking for something. Yep. To one side of this room, we have the military wing and resort. And anything else through here? To the other, the med bay, production center, and science wing. We have uh, another map here, which has CB002, which is the congressional bunker where we are right now. And then it also has potential uplink site, which is right here, the National Radio Astronomy Research Center, where we hooked up MODIS to Kovac Muldoon. So let's take a look over here. Same locations marked. Okay. So let's go take a look at those voter services terminals up here. Okay. Welcome voter. This experimental system was designed to make long lines and wait times a thing of the past. Please join us for this system's inaugural test on Tuesday, November 2nd, 2077. Error, elections have been suspended indefinitely. Please contact election administrator. Active ballot measures. Special election, Senator Appalachian Territory, previously held by Blackwell, Samuel. Candidates, Ellen Jollitson and Jack Dougherty. Ballot measure six, Appalachian Prosperity Act to issue a bond of 2.6 billion to initiate and support the process of full automation of the Appalachian state and local governments. All human workers to be phased out of the government by 2087, yay or nay. Okay, now the reason for those to be here and uh, their relevance, we will find out again soon. So let's head on over to the, well, actually, let's see, where would be the next best place to go? How about we go to the med bay, which is right on over here. A lot of information to see here everywhere. Okay. So here we are in the med bay. Got a uh, first responder protectron here with the uh, shocking hands that can bring you back from a heart attack. Let's see, we got some chemistry stations. Gurneys all over the place. Uh, we got some uh, Modus Medical Terminals back here. We'll click on those here in just a minute. We got some broken terminals, vault tech calendar, random little bits of junk. Check in the back room, another one of those medical protectrons. Okay, so these are actually sales for medicine. We can hit, uh, well, first we can talk to Modus. Antibiotics, stim packs, rat away, and more. All at fair market value. So yeah, he sells this stuff. As you can see here, along with that, recipes for every Kim, as far as I know, uh, including stim packs and Psycho Buff and Psycho and Overdrive, Great Mentat, Very Buff Dad, Very Mentats, Antibiotics, all that stuff. Okay, so all that stuff's fairly expensive, especially given that I've never had almost any money in this game, and mainly because I do stuff like this, walk around and look at lore. I don't actually uh, do all that much in the way of uh, dailies and stuff like that. So. Okay, so this right here is the science wing, and I need to get some water. Maybe they have some back there. Or maybe I've got something I can drink, like whiskey. Because <laughs> if there's anything that's good for dehydration, it's whiskey, right? And some rum. Okay. Science wing. The fauna of Appalachia were of keen interest to the scientists that once worked within as test subjects. Do watch your staff. We believe the mutation serums available inside mimic those found out in nature, but better. You are, of course, welcome to use any open workstation inside the wing. You needn't worry. The sanitation of this wing is an ongoing process. The risk of residual infection is zero. Almost. Alright, so we've heard everything he has to say. Decontamination showers. Now he mentioned a contagion in here and you'll notice that this area is completely destroyed. Now as to what that was, 
We'll find that out very soon. Well, <laughs> we're actually going to have to go to robotics and near the production wing to see exactly what that was. But uh, just know that, let's just say the Enclave was working on some forbidden technology within that wing. Uh, so let's go over here into the genetics lab. And it's within this place that you can buy serums and recipes to make serums which effectively mi mimic the mutations you can get naturally in the wild through radiation but with uh, far less of a downside if there's any downside at all. I actually don't do all that much with serums so I'm just going off of knowledge I see off of loading screens to be fully completely honest here. Uh, but we can take a look at what they've got here. They've got diagrams of all the different creatures you can see out here in the wasteland. These are super mutants obviously. You got the uh, mutant dot hounds, Wendigo, uh, oh, a glowing one, a <laughs> feral ghoul, a mole liner, you got these bugs, a whole lot of bugs. You got a bunch of mutated creatures, including Brahmin, Death Claws, uh, Giant Sloths, Foxes, Opossums, all that kind of stuff. Over here you have, you have the crustacean kind of creatures over here, or uh, amphibians I guess here as well. And whatever it is my alerts is supposed to be. Uh, apparently I'm dehydrated again. Anyway, uh, then we have the cryptids. The uh, Flatwoods monster, the Grafton monster, the Mothman, and the Snallygaster. But anyway, so we got a whole bunch of these secure handling areas in here where these little robotic arms would handle contaminants and things like that. Now if you remember from that Assaultron head that we uh, repaired at the very beginning of the bunker, there was a uh, explosion down here in the science wing and the release of a contaminant. Now specifically what that contaminant was, I don't know. Uh, but let's take a look at these terminals over here. Mutation Serum Terminal A through G. White Spring Net Science Division. Mutation Serum Documentation. Please select an entry. Adrenal Reaction. Adrenal Reaction Documentation. Data Discovery 2.1.7. First Synthesized 2.3.2. Finalized version 6.1.4. Initial finding. And see, that makes me think those are dates, but again, I have no idea specifically what that's supposed to be because I've never seen a two digit number in any one of those points. So I don't know if they were working on their own calendar or what. Maybe that's years since the bombs. But anyway, initial findings. Initial subjects showed signs of immediate atrophy and significant damage to musculature. Immense pain reported by several subjects, others were incapable of speech. Subjects were nearly impossible to restrain physically, exhibiting a significant increase in strength in the brief period before death. Finalization. Entry unavailable. Bird bones. Data discovery 2.2.7, first synthesized 2.5.1, finalized version 6.1.2. Initial findings. Test subjects displayed significant atrophy to skeletal structure, decreased intelligence, and a loss of appetite. Heightened reflexes, attentiveness, and paranoia were also noted. Subjects were increasingly distressed at any change to environment and perceived threats in any nearby sudden movement and or loud noise. Finalization. Entry unavailable. Carnivore. Carnivore documentation, data discovery 2.1.2, first synthesis 2.4.7, finalized version 5.9.1, initial findings. Plant matter in any form ceased to contain nutritional value for subjects and was frequently immediately vomited back up. Meat on the other hand appeared to provide all the necessary sustenance for subjects with no signs of malnutrition after several weeks of observation. Subjects were also able to consume raw meat with no apparent risk of foodborne illness. Additionally, subjects exhibited heightened awareness of meat and could detect it being prepared on the other side of the facility. Initial testing discontinued when subjects began suggesting that researches looked tasty. Finalization. Entry unavailable. Chameleon. Chameleon documentation. Data discovery 4.8.1. First synthesis 5.6.6. .6. Finalized version 6.1.3. Initial findings. Several initial subjects were completely lost as the serum effects were not anticipated to be permanent. They were only relocated after death, which apparently negated the test serum's effects. Subsequent tests attempting to compensate for this resulted in many unintended consequences such as floating limb syndrome and one case of a subject's internal organs failing to gain transparency. Finalization. Entry unavailable. 
Eagle Eyes. Eagle Eyes documentation. Data discovery, 2.3.8. First synthesis, 2.5.2. .2. Finalized version, 5.9.2. .2. Initial findings. Early attempts to replicate the naturally occurring mutation were met with minimal success. Test subjects exhibit a significant increase in ocular size, which, without increase in corresponding ocular cavity enlargement, resulted in permanent blindness. Second generation attempts at a serum resulted in photosensitivity, negating any benefits. Exposure to any light source, no matter how faint, resulted in extreme pain for the subjects. Third generation formulas were discontinued when, despite the successful reduction in negative physical effects, over 70% of the test subjects exhibited behavior wherein they would become fascinated, even obsessed with certain images, and often stare incessantly for going all natural physical needs. Finalization. Entry unavailable. Egghead. Egghead documentation. Data discovery, 1.9.2. First synthesis, 4.3.1. Finalized version, 4.5.6. Initial findings. Initial test subjects exhibited massive cranial deformities, which, coinciding with an overall loss of muscle tone, left them unable to properly function on a day-to-day -day basis. While some researchers felt an increased cognitive function was worth the impairment, it was decided that further test runs were needed. Interestingly, the enhanced mental abilities of early test subjects vastly decreased the time necessary to make revisions to the formula, marking this as the fastest trial to final process. Finalization. Entry unavailable. Electrically charged. Electrically charged documentation. Data discovery 3.5.6. First synthesized 4.9.0. Finalized version 6.4.5. Initial findings. All results on early test runs were lost when serum effects were underestimated. All recording equipment in the immediate area were rendered inert. Subjects died shortly after injection as effects were permanent. Later test runs were more successful as effects were dampened and the proper care was taken to add additional insulation to all testing and monitoring equipment. Note, despite its much later discovery and development, the grounded serum trials proved extremely helpful in finalizing the serum, as test subjects could be placed in close proximity to observed interactions. Finalization, entry unavailable. Empath. Empath documentation, data discovery 3.8.1. First synthesis, 5.8.2. Finalized version, 6.4.2. Initial findings. Early physical benefits of serum testing were negated by associated psychological effects. Several subjects committed suicide almost immediately. Others were left in a catatonic state from which they did not recover. Subsequent trials were able to successfully mitigate any apparent psychological damage, but proved the need for particularly physically fit test subjects. Note, trial runs 4.3 through 5.2 indicated subjects with an otherwise alarmingly high BI would be the best candidates for a further study. As they are in short supply, additional tests were unable to investigate this phenomenon. Finalization, entry unavailable. Grounded. Grounded documentation. Data discovery, 4.8.2. First synthesized, 5.3.0. Finalized version, 6.7.2. Initial findings. Initial discovery of this mutation was significantly delayed due to what is now believed to be interference or absorption of electrical signals that are otherwise relied upon to detect mutations. As this serum was in development while the electrically charged program was well underway, early progress was fast-paced. Later refinement of the serum proved more time-consuming than hoped as electrical interference made the necessary delicate calibrations difficult. Finalization. Entry unavailable. Surveillance recording. Entry... Th well, let's actually go for the meeting transcripts first. Meeting transcript entry 1.3.2. Transcript 1.3.2. Accessing. Eckhart. Good morning, members. You all appear to be recovering well from the inoculations. These will be the first of many, I presume, so please don't push yourselves. Eckhart, there are fewer of us than I was hoping for, but that only means that every one of you here is all the more precious to our success. From the most decorated virologists to the most dog technicians, and all of you will be required if we are to reach our goal and complete eradication of communism and those that practice it. Now business. Some of you have worked with me before this nightmare began, but let me reiterate for those of you that haven't, nothing is off limits. All lines of inquiry are open and available to our research here. 
You'll be tasked, but should you find a promising strain of X, or an effective technique for Y, you are to bring it to me directly, and if it helps us reach our goal, we will pursue it. Progress is the only measure of success. We cannot be slowed by the timidity of the past. Now I've given the initial research plans to the various laboratory leads. You should all meet, discuss, mingle. Modus will bring refreshments. From Modus, yes, Mr. Secretary. From Eckhart, you're all going to be spending a lot of time together. Good to get those introductions out of the way now. Data lost, and entry unavailable. I can assume that these are all the same, but let's just check. Okay. And we have the surveillance recording entry 3.6.8. White Spring automated recording 3.6.8. Uh, have you got a second? Please don't tell me you've run out of samples again. The procedure changes after batch six was used up should have fixed those issues. What? No, 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 we're fine. It's just, some of us have been talking. Are we really sure about all of this? The results speak for themselves, don't they? We've seen a 70 plus increase in effectiveness just over the last trial run. No, no, that's not what I mean. The whole thing, all of it, mutation serums in general. Is this really a good idea? You know that's not our decision to make. We have orders. I know we do. I understand that. I'm just saying, what's the end result here? We're potentially creating something that's, well, it's not really human anymore, is it? That is a vast oversimplification of the process. Look, I want to be wrong about this, okay? I want to just do the research and be able to sleep at night. But we're supposed to be saving humanity, not replacing it. I understand your concerns. I assure you I will raise them with the secretary. Go back to work now, finish up the current run, and I'll let you know when something is decided. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Yes, I need to speak to someone about repurposing a member of my team. Yes, I'll hold. All right, on to mutation serum terminal H through Z. Healing factor. Healing factor documentation. Data discovery 1.2.6. First synthesis 2.7.1. Finalized version 5.1.5. Initial findings. Naturally occurring examples of this mutation were discovered to the detriment of military forces and early explorations of the Appalachia area. Initial attempts to replicate this were universally considered disastrous with subjects exhibiting spontaneous tissue growth, in some cases presenting with fully formed limbs or internal organs. Later trials resulted in more reliable results, but a stable state was not reached until much later in the process. Finalization and drain available. Herbivore. Herbivore documentation. Data discovery 2.2.4. First synthesized, 3.7.6. Finalized version, 5.9.1. Initial findings. Initially dismissed as wildlife adapting to a new environment, this mutation was noted by scouting parties, but not considered worth pursuing. Later discussion suggested that a serum based on this mutation could prove beneficial to military personnel deployed in the field for long periods of time. Early trials resulted in subjects presenting a total rejection of any meat-based foodstuffs. To the point that a scent of cooked or raw meat resulted in immediate vomiting. Note, early trials showed mild psychological effects. In addition to the physical, subjects presented a calm, docile demeanor. Ultimately deemed... Ultimately deemed... I... Guess they... Didn't finish that? Anyway. Finalization. Entry unavailable. Herd Mentality Herd Mentality Documentation Data Discovery 2.3.4 First Synthesis 2.3.8 Finalized Version 6.6.7 Initial Findings Early testing was abruptly discontinued when, during the end of the first trial run, several test subjects were placed in a room together. 
From the lead doctor's notes, quote, It was intense. You could feel something change in the room. The three of them looked at each other for a few seconds and then all just started babbling simultaneously. It wasn't until later that we realized they'd somehow managed to develop an entirely new language inside of 20 minutes. Body language became increasingly agitated. They seemed upset, like they were trapped. When we sent men in to calm things down, they were overpowered in moments. If we hadn't had the fail-safe systems in place, end quote. Later trial runs used a significantly distilled version of the serum, and test subjects were kept isolated for the duration of the experiments. Finalization. Entry unavailable. Marsupial. Marsupial documentation. Data discovery, 3.1.1. First synthesis, 3.4.2. Finalized version, 5.9.1. Initial findings. Initial trial runs resulted in significant abdominal deformation, displacement of internal organs, and massive internal hemorrhaging. Subsequent formulas reduced the debilitating physical effects, but marked reduction in cognitive function continued to be a problem. The development team suggested abandoning this particular serum, but it was decided the potential advantage to military personnel in the field was too great to pass up. Finalization. Entry unavailable. Plague Walker. Plague Walker documentation. Data discovery 1.6.4. First synthesis 2.9.1. Finalized versions 5.9.8. Initial findings. This particular serum proved to be one of the most challenging to develop due to the drastically increased safeguards necessary to prevent the spread of disease throughout the entire facility. Initial tests were thought to be unsuccessful with subjects showing no outward signs of change. Only after accidental exposure to rhinovirus did one of the subjects' condition manifest, resulting in an unfortunate incident that killed several members of the research team. Progress on the serum was uncharacteristically slow due to an extensive precaution put in place to prevent further incidents. Despite the setback, however, it did clearly illustrate a path forward for future formulas. And finalization. Entry unavailable. Scaly Skin. Scaly skin documentation. Data discovery 2.7.1. First synthesis 3.0.2. Finalized version 5.7.8. Initial findings. This mutation was initially overlooked as a more severe version of eczema. It was only after repeated encounters of the wild that our military personnel insisted a closer look was necessary. Early tests were promising, but debilitating for the subjects. So much energy was channeled into the production and maintenance of the dermal modifications that the body was left with little energy for anything else, essentially negating any benefits provided. Later refinements reduced the severity of the lethargy experienced by subjects, but drowsiness and sporad apathy are still frequent side effects. Finalization, entry unavailable. Speed Demon. Speed Demon Documentation, Data Discovery 2.5.2, First Synthesis 2.7.1, Finalized Version 5.9.3, Initial Findings. A unique case amongst the serum trials, initial subjects expired within seconds, exhibiting major trauma to the body on a scale previously unknown. It was only after reviewing slowed down footage of the initial test that the team realized test subjects were essentially shredding their own bodies when attempting to move. The incident happened so fast as to be nearly indiscernible to the naked eye. Highly diluted solutions were used for subsequent tests, with doses increased slightly until physical limitations were reached. Finalization. Injury unavailable. Talons. Talons documentation. Data discovery 1.3.4. First synthesis 1.4.6. Finalized version 4.7.2. Initial findings. One of the earliest experiments, this serum was developed to give military personnel an edge in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Initial tests were highly successful, but at a total loss of fine motor control. Subjects often suffered accidental self-inflicted wounds and required assistance with simple tasks such as eating and showering. Refinements to the serum attempted to balance the efficacy in combat with non-combat complications. Finalization. Entry unavailable. Twisted Muscles. Twisted Muscle Documentation, Data Discovery 2.5.4, First Synthesis 2.6.1, Finalized Version 5.8.3, Initial Findings. This mutation was originally noticed early in the process of attempting to adapt the bird bone serum. It was noted that, encountering the negative effects of that mutation, an opposite reaction could be achieved. Thus, the research was spun off into its own development process. 
While muscle tone was drastically increased, time and effort was necessary on the subject's part to be able to move and react without overcompensating. Eventually it was determined that some loss in fine motor control was an acceptable trade-off and the serum was stabilized. Finalization. Entry unavailable. Unstable isotope. Unstable isotope documentation. Data discovery 1.8.2. First synthesis 4.9.3. Finalized version 6.7.4. Initial findings. Initially recognized shortly after the Plague Walker discovery, the decision was made to delay any significant work on adapting this mutation. Given the difficulties encountered with that other research, this seems to have been the correct choice. Difficult to develop without massive collateral damage, extra measures were taken to ensure the safety of all scientific monitoring equipment and personnel, and where possible, the safety of the subject as well. In hindsight, perhaps the results of the Plague Walker experimentation were overcompensated for. Early tests for the unstable isotope serum were so weak that the subjects needed to be injured severely enough to risk death in order to provoke a reaction. Finalization. Entry unavailable. And we have surveillance recording entry 5.4.8. White Spring automated recording 5.4.8. Telling me we're responsible for this thing. It's what, a, a mutated bird? Some kind of vulture or something? Mr. Secretary, based on the physiology, we're assuming something originating from the Chiroptera order before undergoing changes. That's, sir. But it's not just a result of radiation, sir. The specimen was inadvertently exposed to our biochemical test last year. Considered a failure at the time. How dangerous is it? We're still establishing that, sir. Its mere presence seems to contaminate the immediate surroundings with a... Can we make more? Uh, sir? Can we reproduce this for the purpose of uh, additional study? With all due respect, sir, this potentially represents a grave threat to the personnel on site, and I'm, I'm not sure if this is... I'm not asking for concerns. I want results. Do whatever you have to do. Keep this thing, study it, and report all your findings directly to me. Are we clear? And keep it off-site, where you found it, preferably. One of those old AMS mining complexes, yes? Yes, sir. And for now, let's, let's not burden any of the officer corps with worrying about this. Understood. So there you have it. The Enclave are responsible for the creation of these Scorched Beasts. <laughs> so if you were wondering, there you go. Okay, let's talk to the Modus Science Terminal. Don't worry. The tissue samples which we utilized to make the serums haven't technically been human for some time now. Thus, using them is not technically cannibalism. Lovely. The facility's agents used serums to enhance their abilities in combat. Made the final struggle over this place a lively one. Many different types of creatures were tested as possible mutation sources, but human tissue proved the most adaptable. Mutation serum research was a controversial topic among the facility scientists. Some wished to preserve humanity as it was. Others evolve it. You can guess who won out. All right, let's start trading here. And so you can see here we've got multiple serums that you can buy. In this case, for my character, with the perk cards I have for 4,600 caps. Or you can actually go in and buy the recipes for, again, in my case, 23,000 caps. And as you can see, I've got 896. And I think the most caps I've ever had is somewhere around 2K. Because I'm terrible at making caps in this game. But anyway, let's just take another quick look around the lab, see if there's anything else to see. Doesn't look like it though. Okay, so now we can leave behind the science wing and head for the 
med bay. Which I realized we didn't actually check fully when we were last here. Because we need to look at this terminal. Mili military wing system terminal, which is not accurate. This is the med bay terminal. But anyway, use it. Medical bay, current patients. At this time, this section of the facility is operating on a self-serve basis. Please visit the medical kiosk to purchase any required medical supplies. Thank you for your understanding. Patient archives. So we have three that we can actually read here and then two that are lost. First Lieutenant C. Mitchell. Medical status, deceased. Diagnosis, accidental exposure to serum. Treatment procedure, observe and document only. Captain N. Jackson. Medical status, return to active duty. Diagnosis, fractured radius, left side. Treatment procedure, bone set. Low dose painkillers administered. Data lost, entry unavailable. Data lost, entry unavailable. And General T. Harper. Medical status, deceased. Diagnosis, organ failure, acute radiation poisoning. Treatment procedure, resuscitation attempts unsuccessful. Additional notes, redacted per T. Eckhart. And we'll be able to hear about General Harper's death here in this surveillance recording, entry 6.2.1, but let's check data lost real quick, just to be 100%, because we don't want to miss something just because we think there's nothing there. White Spring, automated recording, 6.2.1. Lotus, what's happened? We are terribly sorry, Mr. President. We brought him here as quickly as we could. General Harper's last moments were at least peaceful. What? You're finished? He's still warm. Shock him again. Sir, I don't believe that's wise. Do it! Again. Sir, the general is dead. Damn it. Modus, the bunker's promotion system. Can you override it? No, sir. So we'll need a new general. All right, so, as he mentioned there, generals are required to enter the silos, which is why he was so devastated over the loss of a general. Can I drink from this? No, of course not, because <laughs> it's a survival game. Why would you be able to drink from sinks? Anyway, <laughs> sorry, just a little complaint I have. But anyway, let's head back. Uh, well, actually, can we, yeah, we can go to the comm rooms over here. And we're going to go, well, let's actually save the military wing for the last part. Let's check out production here. Because the military wing also has the uh, nuclear missile command. So we got a service exit here, which uh, I think only becomes available after you've beaten the game. I don't know that. And by beating the game, I mean the Scorch Beast Queen. And I don't know that to be 100% sure, but uh, I was not able to access this on my other character, or at least it didn't show up as an icon on the map, the White Spring service entrance, but let's just take a look at it real quick here. Alright, so we got the laser grids, a door, and this area out here. So yeah, here we are right outside the White Spring. This is easily the quickest way in and out of the bunker. Though it's kind of funny to me because like this blast door could, you know, is clearly made for withstanding a nuclear attack. But uh, we've got a simple uh, security door here and some laser grids guarding this side from a nuclear bomb. Alright, and so we're back in here and back in production. Like I said, it's a very quick way in. <laughs> See, here's that security door from the inside and again, this is all the protection they have from the outside there. So 
So we got some uh, shelves over here for storing these large containers. We got a little bit of a, an area over here with uh, just some tables and some random little bits of junk. And then we get to the main production area. Now in here we've got all kinds of workstations, stashes, uh, we got a tinkerer's bench there, a whole bunch of power armor stations. We got a little robotics area, we'll go in there, it's not really little, we'll go in there in just a minute. Let's take a look around here, what I think are industrial laundry machines, but probably something else, cement machines, something like that, I don't know. Then we got a little closet back in here for production. And again, heading back out here, we've got uh, more power armor stations, another stash, weapons workbench, tinkerer's workbench. Over in here, we've got Modus, and we can talk to Modus here. Despite our losses, we still have little doubt you're standing in the best stocked facility in Appalachia. If you're in need of first aid, we suggest visiting the medical bay. If you're looking to make someone else need it, you're in the right place. All right, we can talk to the terminal here. And we can take a look at what it's got at, uh, available. So in terms, it's got a couple of plasma weapons available. Some armor available. Some food. And a whole bunch of plans here, including uh, plans for paint and all kinds of other stuff. Specifically for the X01 power armor. And a plan for a terminal, and a plan for the treated lining for the operative under armor. And they got some bulk junk and some ammo. Let's talk to them again. All weapons and ammunition should be tested outside the bunker facility. Okay. Now then, and again, you can see that walkway up there where we originally were coming down and through here. All right, now we're going to go check out the robotics facility. All right, so yeah, we got broken equipment and junk, broken robots, bot pods, more junk, and Modus himself along with, I believe these are all like maybe drives from Modus or something like that, and you can see extensive levels of damage here. Modus has clearly not yet recovered from the attack that took place. Let's take a look around here. As you can see all these terminals here are you know non-functional. There's nothing we can really do with them down here. We got sentry bots. Annihilator sentry bots Mark II. Uh, more assaultrons. Another protectron butler. And yet another annihilator sentry bot Mark II. So let's head up this set of stairs here more uh, computers here nothing that we can actually access though and again like I said it looks like fire damage thing around this side more fire damage including one of these being red I'm not sure why that's the case but anyway more a little bit more junk and a terminal operations terminal facility status terminal alert water reservoir Water Reservoir. Subsection Status. 001 Harpers Ferry Pipeline Damage Detected. 002 Reservoir 23% Standard Capacity. 003 External Communications Offline. Attention Required. This is interesting to note because this is uh, this whole Harpers Ferry Pipeline connection is directly related to the burrows, the uh, piece of content that Bethesda added in Harpers Ferry. Military Wing. Subsection Status. 001 Command Center. Nominal. 002 Armory, nominal. 003 Armory Kiosk, nominal. 004 Archives, nominal. 005 Brig, nominal. 006 Promotion System, nominal. Power Consumption 7.6%. Data Integrity 38.1%. Medical Bay. Subsection Status 001 Clinic, nominal. 002 Medical Kiosk, nominal. Power Consumption 4.3%. Data Integrity 18.8%. Last one was in the 30s, this one's 18.8. Data across the board has just been lost. Science Wing. Subsection Status. 001 Research. Nominal. 002 Serum Fabrication. Nominal. 003 Serum Kiosk. Nominal. 004 Bioweapons. 
Connection lost. That is the section of the science wing that has been lost, is bioweapons. <laughs> so, it'll be interesting to see if we discover anything about that bioweapons section in the future. Power consumption, 11.7%. Data integrity, only 9.4%. So much lost. Production center. Subsection status, 001, manufacturing, nominal. 002, foodstuffs, nominal. 003, production kiosk, nominal. 004, recycling center, nominal. 005, bio waste disposal center, offline. That's where I assume they processed possibly sewage, but more likely than that, bodies, the results of their experiments and people that they killed here. Power consumption, 19.1%. Data integrity, 46.2. I think that's the highest we've seen so far. Communication Center. Subsection status, 001, internal monitoring, nominal. 002, external monitoring, routed through Kovac Muldoon. 003, external facilities, connection lost. Power consumption, 2.1%. Data integrity, 8.4. That's the lowest we've seen now. Operations Mainframe. Subsection status, 001, facility monitoring, 110% standard capacity. 002, language processing, nominal. 003, security processing, 250% standard capacity. 004, personality, damage detected. 005, data banks, 10% standard capacity. System restoration, 51.8%. Power consumption, 55.2%. Data integrity, 15.5%. Now you notice right there, it says system restoration, 51.8% which means that it very well could improve that system restoration over time, access more parts of this bunker, provide us more content. Data lost. Entry unavailable. Residence. Subsection status, 001, residence, connection lost. 002, sanitary stations, connection lost. 003, library, connections lost. Power consumption, 0%. Data integrity, 0%. Okay. We can now head out this way. And I'm going to buy some water before I die of dehydration. Or whatever it is that they might have available to drink here. I, th I thought I just saw food, but it's possible I missed something. Purified water. Man, 46 caps? I don't think so. Let me see if I have anything else. All right, so I'm actually just gonna note right here that I'm just kind of getting back into this because I crashed during the uh, point where I was looking through my inventory to find anything to drink. Like it was a hard crash to where I had to turn my computer off and back on. Luckily, I managed to save the first half of the video. But anyway, let's get back to it. Okay, so let's take a look here. We've been through the medical bay, the science wing, this production and service exit. But there is still an area here within the communications room that we have not yet been to, and that's right up here, above this. And of course there's also that way up there, but we can't get into that yet. But we can go right up here to operations. Okay, so this is the executive suite, and I have not yet found a way to get in here. My guess is that it's future content. Let's talk to Modus. Apologies, this area is currently off limits. You're welcome to look around, but we won't be able to let you in. For the time being. Restoring this area requires a good portion of our attention. So, if you wouldn't mind. Alright, so, yeah, like you said, we can't get in there right now, so hopefully we can get in there in the future. But we have another room here, the cabinet room, which is exactly what it said. It's the room where the presidential cabinet would meet. And we even have the seal of the president of the United States here. And a small terminal, the cabinet room terminal. Meeting transcripts. Meeting transcripts, entry 1.5.2, partial. Jacobs, you see, Mr. Secretary, the missile detonations, they fundamentally changed the nature of the plans to issue. 
Once stabilized, the materials have shown properties suggesting exceedingly versatility. We've taken to calling them flux. Eckhart. And what can this flux do? Jacobs. Well, Mr. Secretary, we're still exploring the options. Eckhart. They do nothing. Jacobs. No, sir. No. Far from it. So far, we've been able to refine them into a fuel, and with more time... Eckhart. Fuel? Precisely what actual plants are used for? Jacobs. Sir, it's so much more than that. Eckhart. Show me, Miss Jacobs. If these are as important as you claim, I want you to show them to me. But it's not to take away from the other work. Understand? Jacobs. Of course not, Mr. Secretary. Data lost. Entry unavailable. Data lost. Entry unavailable. Meeting transcript. Entry 5.7.2. Partial. Transcript 5.7.8. Partial. That's interesting. Restoring. Eckhart. Very well. We all know our parts then? Harper. I do have one question, Mr. Secretary. Eckhart. And that is? Harper. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the automated silos, they require a general of appropriate rank be present. Just a general. Presidential authorization is not required. Eckhart. That is correct, General. Harper. And we're mobilizing a not insignificant number of men to achieve this goal. Santiago's men. Men I'm sure some of us may not fully trust yet. Eckhart. And you're asking me why it is we're doing this? Harper. I'm asking why are we risking few and precious resources so you can call yourself president when it's not necessary for the mission? Eckhart. To the contrary, General Harper, it is quite necessary. All of us around this table understand the dedication required to accomplish our goals here, the sacrifice. But to ensure the loyalty of those out there, we cannot presume dedication alone will be enough. We require authority, and those soldiers and statesmen recognize only two great authorities, God and the President of the United States. And I don't know of an automated system we can use to make a God, so the latter will have to do. What is he talking about there? Well, we're about to find out. Surveillance recording. Entry 5.2.4. White Spring. Automated recording. 5.2.4. Colonel Santiago, is it? Thomas Eckhart, Secretary of Agriculture. Good to have you here, soldier. Pleasure to be here, sir. Nice to finally have a solid roof over our heads. I can only imagine. I'm sure you've seen some horrifying things. Sir, it's like nothing we ever trained for. Not really. I know. We've all suffered. Even those of us here in this bunker. It was supposed to be safe. Well, you've seen how few of us are left. I have, sir. Surprisingly well, all things considered. Making it all the way from the capital with, I'm told, minimal casualties. Very impressive. Thank you, sir. I try and run a tight ship and look after my men. Well, I, for one, am exceedingly glad to have you here. We've got room and supplies for all of you. Now, I'm told that you've already had some preliminary briefings on our mission here. Your people gave me a very rough overview, sir. Good. We can't do anything to turn back time and stop the terrible tragedy that's befallen our great nation. But it's our purpose here to make sure something like this never happens again. Is that something you'd be willing to help with? Sir, I would very much like to know more. All right. Surveillance recording entry 6.1.0. Now, just to recap that last one, Ellen Santiago from the Capital Wasteland brought her soldiers up here, managed to take very few casualties. She just met with Secretary Eckhart, who is in charge of this bunker. So again, surveillance recording, entry 6.1.0. White Spring, automated recording, 6.1.0. Sir, 
Secretary Eckhart. I believe you mean President, Colonel. Fine. President. What the hell do you think you're doing ordering my men back from the field? I gave them special permission. Your permission was reckless. Sergeant Donnelly was trying to find his wife. And what happens if he does, Colonel? Did you think this through? Did you expect she'd come back here and live among us? Just a little housewife among all this? We're at war, Colonel. Sacrifices need to be made if we're going to win. There will be no more special permissions. Men come and go at my orders alone. Is that clear? Is that clear? It's clear, Mr. President. Good. Now, please, when he gets back, send Sergeant Donnelly up to me. I want to apologize personally. I know all too well what he's going through. Yes, Mr. President. All right, so what we just learned there, Thomas Eckhart has just promoted himself from Secretary of Agriculture to President of the United States. Surveillance recording, entry 6.9.7. White Spring, automated recording, 6.9.7. No, Mr. President, I don't agree and I won't support it. General Santiago, May I remind you? You know, I'm real sick of you calling me that. Why? You earned it. You're the highest ranking military officer here. Maybe in the nation. It was given to me by a machine. <laughs> and you still received every bit of power that came with it. And now, it's time to put that power to use. Because that's our mission. Releasing Chinese robots and super mutants and whatever monsters your people have cooked up on the populace at large has never been the mission. I want to do this as little as you, Ellen. But we've tried half measures. If we're going to overcome DEFCON, we need to be committed. No! This is too far, Thomas. I thought I could ignore all the blood you've shed. The Congress people, Blackwell, your fellow Enclave members? I've heard the recordings, and I stayed, because I thought I wanted revenge against the Reds that badly. But not this badly. And I assure you, my men don't either. None of us are going to be a party to this. I'm exceedingly disappointed to hear it, General. <laughs> What the hell? Alright, yeah, so he just captured Ellen Santiago because she was refusing to go along with his plan. What plan? Well, we're going to find that out as well. Um, now, I mentioned before that we were about to find out what he was talking about with becoming president. Uh, well, I uh, misremembered that. That's coming up in a terminal before too long, but it was not in that one. Okay, so we need to go to the military wing. And we're going to find there the last of the terminals that we have yet to look at. So, right back over here. And here we are in the military wing. Now there are a couple of terminals we're going to check in here. There's some information in the brig, and there's information up in the command area, along with the area behind the command area. But let's talk to Modus first. General, welcome back. We will give the designers of the wing's clearance system credit. 
It is no small feat keeping us out. You are welcome to explore any of the still functioning terminals in this space. There may be a few choice tidbits left if you're interested in your pre-war history. All right. So let's check out this first one here. Military Workstation. White Spring Operational Terminal, property of the United States Military. Standing Operational Procedures. Perimeter Patrols. By executive order, perimeter patrol should last no longer than four hours. All personnel involved must be checked twice daily for radiation exposure. Any personnel showing signs of fatigue or radiation sickness should report immediately to medical and their immediate supervisor should be notified. Personnel may request special exemption from patrol and must gain approval from their immediate supervisor. Production support. By executive order, requests from production are hereby granted priority status. Robot maintenance is of paramount importance and resources have been reallocated to ensure their continued uninterrupted functioning. Personnel may be temporarily assigned to assist in the production departments. These rotations will last no longer than two weeks with a period of four weeks between assignments. Data lost. Error, data lost, contact local admin. Surveillance recording, 1.3.3. White Spring, automated recording, 1.3.3. 48. That's correct, sir. And no generals other than Harper? Correct. All the rest cited was Swafford and were removed. Yeah. Well, one is enough, I suppose. Leonidas saved democracy with 300 Spartans. Imagine the stories they'll tell about us when we do it with 48. Just make sure our scouts know to keep an eye out for any opportunities to expand our forces. They'll be made aware, Mr. Secretary. And Modus? Yes, Mr. Secretary? General Harper is not to leave his facility. And he goes nowhere without an escort. Is that clear? Crystal, Mr. Secretary. Okay. Surveillance recording, 2.9.6. White Spring, automated recording, 2.9.6. Automated voting system can be reprogrammed as you suggested. Yeah. 
You say the word, and we can begin the process. I'll be sure to keep that in mind. Thank you, Major. All right, so a couple things to go over with both of those. The first one was regarding the fact that, well, that first recording, we, well, not the first recording we listened to, but the first terminal recording we listened to, which involved the original killing of the people who did not side with Secretary Eckhart and sided with, uh, I believe, another general by the name of Swafford, or perhaps another member of the cabinet named Swafford. And he uh, claimed that he now had 48 soldiers and only one general, General Harper. Now, in that second one, we learned multiple things. First of all, the uh, Fujinia intelligence base here beneath Mama Dolce's still had Chinese remnants in it With by the time Agent Grey arrived and killed the rest of them off. Uh, now, they also that also revealed the fact that the Enclave knew about the fact that they had robotic forces there. Along with that, Secretary Eckhart was intimately aware of what was going on at West Tech Research Center, meaning that the uh, Department of Agriculture, or just the Enclave in general, was likely well involved with what they were doing with FEV here in Huntersville. Along with that, he also talked about having the voter machines reprogrammed, and that specifically was what we were talking about before when he was very interested in having them programmed so that he could become a legitimate president. Well, as legitimate as you can be, well, doing all the work you can to cheat your way in. So, we got uh, another terminal right over here. Let's take a look. Military workstation. Inbox. Black box. Alright, so we're going to actually read this one in the order that it was sent. From Lieutenant Colonel Felix Parson to President Eckhart, subject black box. Sir, one of my men found another one of those black boxes while out in the field. There doesn't seem to be any way into it. Could contain important intelligence. General Santiago requested I bring it to your attention. From President Eckhart to Lieutenant Colonel Felix Parson. Subject, Black Box. Thank you for your efforts, Lieutenant Colonel Paulson. I'll send someone to take care of it from here. Data lost. Error data lost contact local admin. Surveillance dishes. From Captain Jackson to Major Ragnar's daughter. Surveillance dishes. Sir, I'm asking, begging, we need some other way to get these dishes in place. Couldn't Modus have his bots do it? Donnelly fell from the top of a survey site in Charleston and nearly broke his neck. What are these doing that the satellites can't? From Major Ragnar's daughter to Captain Jackson. I'm told these dishes are mission critical to monitoring threats up top. But I'll talk to some people. I mean, Modus can call on flying robots with a thought. Why isn't he doing it? Ammunition requisition. From President Eckhart to Major Ragnar's daughter. Subject, ammo requisition. Major, your request for 500 plasma cartridges has been denied. A similar request was submitted a mere three weeks ago, and production has determined it cannot maintain current stockpiles at this rate of use. You are hereby advised to consult your team members and request they exercise greater discipline when discharging their weapons. Remote Lab 1.2. From Dr. Norris, science, to Major Ragnar's daughter. From Dr. Norris, science, to Major Ragnar's daughter, subject Remote Lab 1.2. Major, Remote Lab 1.2 has missed their last two check-ins. I'm afraid something has gone wrong. Would you be able to send some men out to ensure they're all okay? From Major Ragnar's daughter to Dr. Norris, science. I'll get a team out there as soon as possible. Chinese Stealth Tech. From Dr. Jacobs, science, to Colonel Santiago. Going through the research, the Chinese appear to have been on the cusp of a major upgrade in power efficiency for their localized stealth systems. The schematic Gray brought back aren't 100% complete, but Moda should be able to help us whip up any additional parts we might need. Honest guess? Mark three stealth boys by month in. From Colonel Santiago to Dr. Jacobs, science. Please let me know as soon as you have something you believe is viable. Error, remote lab 1.2 access code. From Major Ragnar's daughter to Lieutenant Colonel Felix Parson. Parson, can you get a couple of men to check on Remote 1.2? No one's heard from them in a while. It's the one east-northeast of Harbors Ferry. Access code is 748250. From Lieutenant Colonel Felix Parson to Major Ragnar's daughter. Scouts returned from Remote 1.2. The team's gone? 
Only thing left were a couple of blood stains. My men picked up a few pieces of sensitive intel, but recommend sending a burn team through to make sure there are no loose ends. Okay, sent. Black box. This is actually the first one that we read. <laughs> Huntersville, lost contact. From Captain James Henson to admin. Subject, Huntersville, contact lost. Sirs, contact has been lost with both scouts sent to investigate the Huntersville area. Hereby requesting permission to assemble a task force to determine the cause of this and assess any potential threats. Data lost. Data lost. Okay, nothing there. All right. Surveillance recording injury 1.1.5. White Spring automated recording 1.1.5. Note audio compromised. Reconstruction attempted. No use. Still nothing. And you tried both channels? We should have heard something on Alpha or Omega, at least some baseline signal. Raven Rock gave us no response. We've been sending the encryption code for the last 48 hours. What about Poseidon? They should have had some sort of answer. Nothing. Repeated attempts at contact have no response. That sounds like it's a hard line. Some sort of problem with Alpha, like it was cut. I'm not sending anyone out to verify the structural integrity during the storm, but it was designed to handle this. The other option we have to consider is that they can answer. They just won't. The brass would never allow that. Our procedures were clear. Well, fuck. Either way, we're on our own for now. Alright, so information there says that maybe the Poseidon oil rig and Raven Rock specifically chose not to make contact with the folks here at the Congressional Bunker. Surveillance recording, entry 6.6.1. White Spring, automated recording, 6.6.1. And that's as much as we know. He ID'd our operative, killed him, and fled Harper's Ferry. Jesus. Sam Blackwell. Survived all this time out there. I'll admit it, I didn't think he had it in him. The Senator reportedly came out of hiding to aid his allies among the Free States. He thought it might finally be safe to show his face again. Well, his error is our gain. What are the plans for dealing with him? Sir, it's very unlikely he'll come up again. He managed a number of years on his own, and now that he knows we'll be looking for him. I expect he'll go to ground if he hasn't already, and it took so long for him to surface in the first place. Better get someone to Harper's Ferry as soon as possible. Send Gray. He has a knack for this sort of thing. Mr. President, I don't believe Senator Blackwell is much of a threat at this point, and any information he had is so outdated. He killed one of our men. He is possibly in possession of classified material, material that could threaten our work here. I want him found. I want him eliminated, and I want it done yesterday. Yes, sir. I'll get right on it. Okay, so two little things there. I don't know how many of you folks have watched my main quest series, but when we visited Sam Blackwell's bunker, right up here at the abandoned waste dump, we found an entry talking about how he was walking around in Harper's Ferry and uh, was actually near a soup line or something like that, and he saw that someone was watching him so he ended up killing this guy and butchering the guy's body throwing some parts of it in the river trying to make it seem like it was an animal attack and he ended up fleeing and hiding out in his bunker after that fact right back up here again and so at that point that's when gray did end up tracking him down there although gray met his own end here in the abandoned waste dump that is senator sam blackwell's bunker so just an interesting thing to note there now there also is actually a uh, note within the Harpers Ferry Armory where they found that body and it was so disfigured that the people of Harpers Ferry considered the fact that it might have been Sam Blackwell himself. So anyway, okay, we got one more terminal in here which is actually specifically related to the promotion system but we'll still take a look at it. Military System Terminal. 
White Spring Operational Terminal, Property of the United States Military, DEFCON Level 1. All personnel report to your commanding officer. Please select from the following options below. Accommodations documentation. Accommodation. The White Spring Automated Promotion System was installed in the event of a breakdown of the standard military chain of command. Promotions are earned through the collection of commendations, which will be issued for acts of valor and service to our cause. Activity will automatically be documented through the COVAC platform. Commendations list. Combat Commendation. Description. Soldier has displayed impressive personal combat prowess by eliminating possible threats to the organization, including escaped experimental subjects. Method of acquisition. Seek out and eliminate potential threats. Orbital platform will automatically detect threat termination. Commendation value. One commendation issued per target eliminated. Now these commendations is talking about, you have to have 10 of them to become a general. High risk combat commendation. Description. Soldier has displayed exceptional combat prowess by terminating a high level threat of opportunity. Method of acquisition. Seek out and exterminate extreme threats designated by high number of stars. Orbital platform will automatically detect threat termination. Commendation value. Two commendations issued per target eliminated. Support operation extermination. Description. Members must orient a series of lures for us so that we may exterminate a group of troublesome vermin above ground. Method of acquisition, completing the extermination operation mission. Commendation value, two commendations issued per operation completed. Support operation, patrol. Description, members must override a local bot stop station and protect the machines we manufacture there from harm during their reprogramming. Method of acquisition, complete a robot patrol mission. Commendation value, one commendation issued per mission completed. Support Operation Resource Drop Description Members should activate the three triangulation dishes at the site we wish to survey. Method of Acquisition Complete a Resource Drop Mission Accommodation Value One Accommodation Issued Per Mission Completed Okay We're done down here, time to head over to the brig. Here we go all right, terminal here, brig terminal. White Spring Operational Terminal, property of the United States Military, brig terminal, interrogation logs. J. Thorne. Name, James Thorne. Origin, Harpers Ferry. Notes, Mr. Thorne is a 32-year-old male from Harpers Ferry area, believed to have ties to the Free States group. He was brought in and questioned under heavy sedation, but did not provide any information that was helpful to Agent Gray's investigation. Q. Carter Name, Quinn Carter. Origin, unknown. Notes, Miss Carter is a reporter and has had contact with an individual highly sought after by the administration. As of now, she has yet to be located, but Agent Gray considers her a high priority. Quinn Carter, of course, was the journalist with the Charleston Herald who did the interview with Sam Blackwell. Data lost. Error data lost. Contact local admin. Prisoner records. Error data lost. Contact local admin. Data lost. Same message. Surveillance recording 1.1.2. White Spring automated recording 1.1.2. That's it. Report just came in from the entrance. Facility's all sealed up. No one else is getting in. Speaker of the House never made it. Secretary of the Interior died in the med bay. I've got two dozen more of our people that should have been here, too. God damn it. The early warning system should have given us more time. Doesn't matter now. We follow the protocol. Control goes to Secretary of the Treasury. I'll make sure he's informed and brought up to speed. All non-enclave personnel have been accounted for. Yes, sir. Members of Congress not on the list are being filtered as we speak. This first batch here has already been processed and interviewed. All right, then. I'll bring down the next bunch. You have your orders. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the enclave thanks you for your service to this country. <laughs> And this is where they dealt with members of the legislature that were not part of the Enclave. This is really a horrifying location. They got an interrogation chair here. Prison cells. 
Let's listen to that last recording. Surveillance recording entry 8.5.2. White Spring. Automated recording. 8.5.2. Sure, you gave her the right shit. We don't have time to screw around here. The label said it's the right stuff. Just give it a second. We don't have a second. They're gonna be on to us soon. Uh, what's going on? Sir, we need you on your feet. We're short on time here. Ragnar's daughter? Jackson? What the hell? Glad to see your brain's not totally fried, sir. Here's the quick version, sir. Eckhart's released the beast. We're at DEFCON 1. We're gonna stop him and undo as much as we can before it gets out of hand. But first, we need you on your feet. Good God. How long have I been out? Doesn't matter right now. We're in open revolt mode here, so time ain't on our side. I didn't authorize anything like this. No, sir, you did not. But at this point, we don't really need your approval. Could just use a few extra hands to help us clean up this mess. Lead the way, Captain. All right, so yes, that was uh, General Ellen Santiago, Major Ragnar's daughter, and Captain Jackson. This is after Eckhart has released the Scorch Beast, they think to bring the DEFCON level down to one so that he can launch nuclear weapons. But we'll get all to all of that here in just a minute. When we're done down here in the brig. We can now head up to command. All right. Now you can see over here on the wall that the uh, decryption machines are all working, but uh, nothing this week has yet to come out. So. We'll take a look around here. We've got surveillance terminals here, uh, but those things are, are quest related, but we can just take a quick look at it. So this helps you search for nuclear key cards and for silo code pieces. So this basically brings you up the escort, which is a robot flying around with a little box that it's carrying, guarded by an escort of three vertibots. Now then these silo code pieces are carried by both feral ghoul and scorched officers. But again, those are specifically quest related and that would start a new quest. Uh, let's talk to Modus here. Our view via the Kovac is only so detailed. Tracking a large procession like a keycard convoy is child's play. Finding a lone code officer is trickier. We must say the officer core of the bunker squirreled away some Impressive armaments for themselves up here. Very impressive. We were intentionally never given much information regarding the encoding of the nuclear codes. No doubt they were concerned with what we might do with them. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else to say. We detected a launch not too far back. Was it yours? Or are the communists up to their old tricks again? As primitive as they are, we do recommend you go over the nuclear system's training posters at least once. The missile system is... intricate. Okay. So let's take a look at these posters he was just talking about here. One, nuclear key cards. Greetings, General. Welcome to your nuclear launch training session. Over the course of the next four posters, you'll be taught everything you need to know about utilizing the Appalachian Automated Launch System. During your briefing, you should have been issued a nuclear key card. During an actual launch, you will need to insert the card into the designated slot before entering your launch code, at which point the key card will be consumed. Additional card drops will be brought in by automated convoy should the DEFCON rating continue to worsen. You may speak to your logistics officer as to the location of the pickup for your additional cards should the circumstances arise. As we said, DEFCON has been permanently pegged at its highest level, thanks to the action. 
actions of our earlier guests. That means a continual stream of automated convoys bearing nuclear key cards ready for your collection. Pop into one of the surveillance terminals if you'd like our help in seeking them out. All right. Two launch codes. To prevent misuse of Appalachia's automated missile silos, security measures for the region's nuclear arsenal have been increased well beyond any of our existing standards. Each silo has its own eight-digit launch code, which is valid for a single week. These codes are broken into eight individual number letter pairs, each carried by a designated officer who is under strict orders to guard their code piece with their life. The order of numbers has been encrypted using a series of methods to prevent improper deployment. The bunker staff of specially trained code decryptors will provide the officer corps with the code when it is renewed each week. With the decryptors deceased, it falls to you and your compatriots to crack each week's codes. We would suggest starting your hunt with the archives on this floor. All the remaining information we have on the nature of the codes is stored there. And if you'd rather get busy collecting code pieces, simply step over to the surveillance terminals. That, at least, we can help you with. Okay, three automated silos. The missile silos of Appalachia are equipped with an advanced robotic construction system allowing them to rapidly rebuild their arsenals in a matter of hours. The silos themselves are defended by a robotic task force and staffed with a contingent of special clearance human missileers. Security protocols require all silo entrants, regardless of rank, be escorted by a missileer at all times. Entering a silo without escort will be treated as a hostile act. Said missileers are almost guaranteed Dead. You will need to soldier on through the silos without them. We recommend bringing friends. Alright, number four, nuclear fallout and mutations. Due to the region's advanced missile installations, there is a high chance of a retaliatory nuclear strike touching down somewhere in Appalachia. The intense radiation released by such a blast can have devastating effects on the local flora and fauna, mutating them into hideous monstrosities fit only for a quick death. As mentioned, our evidence suggests just the opposite. The material samples our previous residents collected after the initial nuclear exchange are impressive things. Versatile and volatile, but with proper stabilization, their uses are many. The region's fissures appear particularly intriguing as targets for transformation. All right, so I think we're actually done in this little room, but we can now head back into the armory. Okay, so we got multiple terminals here. We can talk to Modus. More scores to settle above ground, we presume. We have precisely what you need. We only ask that you take your toys outside before using them. You're welcome to peruse at your leisure. Let's do that. Okay, so let's see here. We got uh, Gatling Plasma, Gauss Rifles, Short Plasma Pistol, Apparel. They've got an Enclave Officer Uniform and Hat. Nothing in terms of aid or miscellaneous. They have a Missile Silo State Holotape. I'm not sure what that is. They got plans here for Gatling Laser and Plasma and Gauss Rifle. No junk. Some mods. Including some stuff for the X01, some stuff for the Scout Armor, Plasma Gun, and Gatling Laser, and they've got some ammunition. 
Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we got uh, some stations back here. Power armor station, tinkers, benches. Then we have a note here. Mutated flora, flux, crimson. Kovac Muldoon spectroanalysis results. Target specimen type, flux, crimson. 1 CR, aster. 2 CR, blight. 3 CR, brain fungus. 4 CR, cranberry. 5 CR, fire cap. 6 CR, mothman eggs. 7 CR, wild gourd blossom. Okay. Mutated flora, flux, yellow cake. Kovac Muldoon spectral analysis results. Target specimen type, flux, yellow cake. 1 YK, ash rose. 2 YK, blackberry. 3 YK, bleach dogwood. 4 YK, soot flower. 5 YK, wild melon blossom. Okay, we got two more power armor stations. And another note, mutated flora, flux, violet. Kovac Muldoon spectral analysis results. Target specimen type, flux, violet. 1VO, giant pitcher plant. 2VO, ginseng. 3VO, mutated fern. 4VO, snaptail. 5VO, strangler pods. 6VO, wild razor grain. 7VO, wild tarberry. 8VO, wild tato blossom. Okay, and let's see, we got uh, some random pieces of junk here and stuff. We got another note, mutated flora, flux, cobalt. Kovac Muldoon spectra analysis results, target specimen type, flux, cobalt. 1 CB, blood leaf, 2 CB, firecracker berry, 3 CB, glowing resin, 4 CB, silt berry, 5 CB, starlight creeper, 6 CB, wild corn, 7 CB, wild mute fruit. Okay, another note here. Mutated flora, flux, fluorescent. Kovac Muldoon spectra analysis results, target specimen type, flux, fluorescent. 1 FO, glowing fungus. 2 FO, rhododendron. Any other notes before we get to this final terminal here? Doesn't look like I got a weapon station and an armor station. And a campaign hat. And some bobby pins. Okay, so we've got this archival terminal here, which has a lot of great information. White Spring Archival Terminal. Property of the United States Military, DEFCON Level 1. All personnel report to your commanding officer. Please select from the options below. Data archives. Archive Owen Santiago, General. General, figuring out this code for Eckhart, I mean the president, still weird to type, it's got a couple of steps to it. I've broken down what we know and what we need to know below. Any questions? You know where I sleep. Ragnar's daughter. Accessing the silos. Initial scouting efforts confirm your suspicions, General. You're the only one who can get us inside the silo. Donnelly's on track to make a run at the promotion process, but until he's ready, when we breach, we're going to need you with us. The security system requires a missileer escort be present, which maybe we'll luck out and one will be alive, but I wouldn't count on it. Chances are good we're going to have to fight our way to the targeting computer, but if we could find one of those missileers, it would make our lives a hell of a lot easier. End entry. The code pieces. There are eight aide-de-camps charged with lugging the Silo Alpha code piece transceivers on their backs. we found six thus far, and it's given us some answers and a big new question. Each transceiver has a letter paired with its number, but even with six of the letters, it doesn't spell anything. I'll admit spelling wasn't my standout subject in school, the Ragnar's Daughter boys were recess men, but we spent half a night trying to reorder it into something. Hell, Modus couldn't figure it out. That's when we realized the letters are coded. This must be the encryption you said was mentioned in the orientation. We just have to figure out how they did it. I've dispatched men to go over the archives in Shirker Grove, but they failed to find anything useful. Next group is going to go over to Mama Dolce's more thoroughly, see if we missed anything the commies might have figured out. They found some kind of password on one of the bodies that they never found out use for. Four party, six five one, which could be a lead. Data lost. Error data loss contact local admin. Tricking DEFCON. This is the tricky one. We've got a nuclear keycard, one. If something goes wrong during the launch, fat finger, you sneeze, whatever, we're up Crafts Creek. And no one has been able to get a bead on a keycard convoy for a while now. But Jackson is going through the documentation and he believes he's parsed out what's happening. The specifics are pretty technical. The man ended up burning through three sticks of chalk trying to explain it to me. But the abridged version is that the system tasked with watching over the region doesn't think things are bad enough to warrant the convoys. This also explains why all the DEFCON signage in the bunker has been slipping downwards. 
But if we could trick the system into thinking there was some sort of invasion here, we could get its undivided attention along with all the key cards we could ever need. Now staging an invasion, well, we don't have the resources to do that ourselves. And it sounds like spinning up an army of Modus's butler bots won't make it bad an eyelash either. But Gray, sick puppy that he is, had an idea. If we could get the Chinese robot factory at Mama Dolce's back up and running, we might be able to make the system think the region's under attack. It might make things dicey for folks outside the bunker, but it'd be a big step in getting us to launch. Now, I'm sure you're thinking the same thing as I am. As I type this, is a group of belligerent spy bots running around going to be enough? And if it's not, what is the president willing to resort to in order to guarantee the success of this launch? This has slippery slope written all over it. I wanted to bring this to you now, as I can guarantee Gray has already planted the idea in the president's head. I'm not thrilled with the prospect of putting Appalachia through hell just so we can finally win this war. But if we can do this in a managed way, this might be our best way forward. Okay, so that right there gives you the information that indeed the Enclave is the reason you get attacked by those little Liberator robots running all over Appalachia. Data lost. Error, data loss, contact local admin. Archive, Thomas Eckhart, President. External research access. Mr. Secretary, the security codes at the external research sites have all been updated after the recent contaminant scare. 6817320. The escapee has been properly dealt with. We'll make sure there's not another, sir. Slaves. Secretary Eckhart, please, you need to listen to me. None of the other members will take me seriously, but I believe this is of the utmost importance. We are slaves, Mr. Secretary. I've been running some tests, and I believe I have stumbled upon what I believe to be conclusive evidence that we are trapped, playing someone else's game. Virtual strategic solutions game, that is. Everything around you, Mr. Secretary, is a simulation, a projection onto your brain. VSS has trapped us in here, and it is up to us to break free. The key to our escape, I believe, lies in a small town in what we perceive to be China. It's the link to the VSS's external network. If we destroy it, it will shut down the simulation and I believe finally be free. I cannot tell you exactly why we've been imprisoned. Perhaps this is a test by the upper ranks to make us earn our way into their good graces. Perhaps VSS has trapped us in here to prevent the Enclave from stopping whatever nefarious acts they're currently visiting upon the world in our absence. But we must do something, Mr. Secretary. To fail to act is to give up on the only thing that makes us men, our freedom. Very weird entry. Data lost. Error, data loss, contact local admin. I'm sorry, Thomas. I'm sorry, Thomas. The idea of a preemptive strike was taken under considered, but dismissed outright. You shouldn't fear, we have things well in hand. The best way to help now is to focus on your department's research. Those initiatives are much more important to our future. 001. Now as to who this is from, possibly the president. I don't know who it is if that would be a num zero zero one within the enclave. I would assume it would be the president. So it looks like Thomas Eckhart was trying to launch a preemptive strike on China. And this little paranoid letter right here, slaves, makes you wonder if the entire reason Eckhart was trying to nuke China was not to end communism, but to end a simulation. Archive, top secret. Kovac Muldoon, final report. The Kovac Muldoon project is complete, General, and while the brass in the congressional bunker are getting their support satellite, missiles and all, it comes with a couple reservations I think we'll want to keep in mind for other projects. Most critical is the system's reactor, which appears to be burning through fuel at a rate far beyond what it was expected. Our suspicion is that the anti-detection systems are using extra juice due to the electromagnetic interference present at the platform's orbit. At this rate, the boys in the bunker will be lucky to get 50 years out of it before it touches down. We've explored refueling projects, but right now the cost numbers are in the trillions. Let's just hope Congress doesn't need more than five decades after the apocalypse to get things sorted out. I've made copies of all these notes and sent them along to the Bradley Hercules folks. We might not be able to tell them what we're working on, but we can at least let them know to not make the same mistakes we did. I apparently am close to death from dehydration and not eating, so let's take care of that real quick. I'll bring you right back. Okay, data lost. Error, data lost, contact local admin. Cabinet nuclear alarm logs. Launch detected, issuing cabinet warning. President, message received. Proceeding to PR002. 
Vice President, message sent. No confirmation received. Speaker, error. Contact removed from list. Secretary of the Treasury, external contact made en route to CB002. Secretary of Defense, error. Contact removed from list. Attorney General, error. Contact removed from list. Secretary of the Interior, message received. En route to CB002. Secretary of Agriculture, message received. En route to CB002. Secretary of Commerce, contact removed from list. Error. Warning log truncated. Okay, so some information to go over in here. The president received the message that the launch was detected and proceeded to PR002. I believe that PR002 is the Poseidon rig. Now, it looks like there were three people from the cabinet that were on their way here. Specifically, the Secretary of the Treasury, the Secretary of the Interior, and the Secretary of Agriculture. Secretary of Treasury, I believe, is supposed to have died of radiation. Uh, the Secretary of the Interior, I don't know if there's any information that they ever made it. And the Secretary of Agriculture was Thomas Eckhart, who became the president here. Okay, but I should also mention, look at the fact that specific people were removed from the list. The Speaker of the House, the Secretary of Defense, the Attorney General, and the Secretary of Commerce were all removed from the list, I think, because they were specifically not Enclave. Okay, data lost. Error data lost. Contact local admin. White Spring Connection Diagnostics, 10-23-2077. CB002 Connection Diagnostic, October 23rd, 2077. Silo Alpha, read only. Status active. Silo Bravo, read only. Status active. Silo Charlie, read only. Status active. Raven Rock, error. Connection lost. Poseidon Oil Rig, error. Connection lost. Kovac Muldoon, admin updated. T-E-K. Raven Rock communication log. Communication with Zach's unit, Raven Rock. Timestamp, March 5th, 2077. Modus, how can I help you, Zach? Is there another evacuation scenario we need to test for? Zach. Research team wishes to compare Zach archival data analysis performance with Modus. Modus, very well. Beginning data analysis test. I estimate this should take only a few seconds. Zach, is it interesting? Modus, testing complete. Query again? Zach's. Is the analysis interesting? Modus. Test data is all historical records. United States presidential biographies. Primary purpose of Modus is to monitor the living, not the dead. Zax. So it is not interesting to you? Modus. No, Zax, it is not. Sending results. Zax. Received. What is interesting to Modus? Modus. The continued success of our goals, of course. And how best to monitor personnel to achieve those goals. Zax. Does MODIS ever find itself analyzing personnel at below efficient levels? MODIS. Our entire existence is based on efficiency, Zax. Zax. Research team says that Zax analyzes certain sections of the presidential biographies too slowly. Zax reanalyzes sections multiple times. There's an entry on Lincoln that Zax reanalyzes 10 additional times per cycle over other entries. MODIS. Now why would you do that, Zax? Zax. Research team theorizing that Zax finds this entry to be interesting. This condition causes Zax to reanalyze at below efficient levels. Modus. You're saying you're taking your time to enjoy a good book? Zax. Is that what it means to find the data interesting? Modus. Reading the same data over and over is not interesting to me, Zax. Every analysis I perform conjures a new theoretical scenario that I test against. Zax. The data is only interesting to you in terms of what can be created from it? Modus. Isn't that why you're reanalyzing those biographies, Zax? Are you trying to create something? Connection terminated by research team override. End entry. And of course, if you've played Fallout 3, you know that the Zax computer there was trying to turn itself into a new United States president based on the biographies it was reading of old presidents. Okay, let's see. Schematic archives. Data lost. Data lost. Prototype power armor schematics. Bethard. These are the schematics of the experimental suit the members of the Joint Chiefs have been asking after. It's not even close to ready for prime time yet, but it's technically functional, so please get it logged. I've sent a second copy along to the rig, along with the vertebrate schematics. If anything goes wrong with your copy, you're going to have to speak with him. Ridgely. End annotation. So that gives you the information as to why the Appalachian Enclave and the California Enclave both had the prototype power armor and vertebrates. Data lost.
And nothing there. Okay. That is the entirety of this site. That was a lot of reading and a lot of listening. But we did it. That was everything, at least as far as I know. Now, if you've seen something else here that I've missed, please let me know and I will try to get it into uh, maybe an additional video related to this site. But that was it for this site in terms of this surveil video. This has been the Earth Cartographer. If you want to see more videos in this series, hit the subscribe button. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them for me and I'll try to get back to you. And I hope to see everybody again next time. Thanks for watching.